Oh, boy, it was controversy. It was filled with chaos, uh, criticism. Um, what happened was that they put the race in Vegas. Liberty Media, which owns F1, spent a half million dollars infrastructure to build the racing stables for all the cars, all the seats and everything. Mm -hmm. Spent a ton of money. Priced the tickets really highly. Tickets were sold, bing, 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 right at the beginning. Sales stopped. Prices were so grossly high. Hotel rooms, prices went up. People quit going to Vegas and staying in all those hotels on the Strip for this past three-day weekend. So there was a lot of fallout. And then they get to practice on Friday. And, of course, it was a night race. Mm -hmm. They're going to practice. And eight laps into the practice, the pavement on the main straightaway breaks up. Really? And there's manhole covers that are sticking up because the pavement's gone uh, broken around it. Really? And one of the drivers, Carlos Sainz, hit one of the manhole covers and destroyed his car, ripped the whole bottom of the car out. And he was lucky he didn't get hurt. He was lucky he didn't get airborne. Well, yeah. So there was just a monster of controversy about, did you do diligence? Why is the pavement breaking up? I, again, I understand how powerful these cars are. And so after eight laps, they stopped the practice, did not have qualifying. And it took them six to eight hours to patch everything. And then they had, they had to, their crews had to go the entire length of the course to make sure there was no other pavement breakup. There were no other exposed manhole covers. So they did not let the cars on the track till 2.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. Think about this on Friday morning, 2.30. And then somebody in F1 made the, made the decision, there's not enough security here. We have to remove all the fans. They can't watch it. And that's at 2.30 in the morning. So now, now you got they got fans pissed off. Yeah. The drivers are all upset because they turned this thing into a circus. They had the drivers going to all these public appearances when the drivers are supposed to either be getting rested or going through race meetings, et cetera. And there's a huge jet lag problem because they all came from Europe. Right. Holy cow. And Max Verstappen, he just ripped the hell out of F1. Said, how could you do this to the sport? Well, they finally held the race. And Verstappen made a couple of bold moves, uh, beat the pole sitter, Charles Leclerc, passed him twice, and won the race's 18th win in a row. And on the podium, he indicated this was quite an adventure. We think there's great upside here in Las Vegas. Obviously, somebody got to him and told him to shut his mouth. Right. Uh, he was very positive about the end result. I mean, it was it was pretty snazzy. I watched a chunk of it on TV Saturday night. I, I'd totally forgotten it was a night race. So it was it was electric. It was neon, and that's what Vegas is. Yeah, of course. But man, the controversy from Thursday into race night was absolutely staggering you know and f1 is expanding you know they have three races stateside now and the rumors are going to go to five they're going to find two more venues uh but this this one was kind of cool they wanted to make it their quote championship event in the u.s and there was a lot of glitter that appealed to guys like you i know but uh <laughs> so they got through it verstappen dominated and won again but uh man they had about 72 hours of hell yeah, you know, it's interesting to me that they they pulled this off because logistically, that's a big effort to re reform your whole city and create this racetrack there. Over the objections of the hotel owners who yeah. were really barking. And and also of, of small business owners and, and the people that work in the community. Well, they had to build catch fences on all the straightaways. I mean, it was quite a yeah. financial investment from the, just the track safety perspective to put this in place. And then it interrupted the business dealings of the hotels and the merchants. And they were really steamed about that. And then the dog on track broke up. What a, it was, I, I would say it was part disaster, but sure looked like by the end result Saturday night was part success too. Yeah. I, I think all parties are committed to making this work. F1, the Vegas leadership, because if they can make that thing a, a, you know, a spectacular event, I mean, that could be a big deal in America, but I'm going to go back to the manhole cover it makes me wonder, like, how low do those cars drive? I mean, I mean, if it's only a few inches, and that manhole cover maybe is just tilted a bit. That's enough yep. to cause. I problems. mean, rip the bottom out of Carlos Sainz's car. I saw the bottom of it. 
he's lucky he didn't get airborne or the thing didn't flip because the guys are flying down the main straightaway in front of the hotels. It was a mile and a half straight shot. Wow. You know, usually F1 is around the tri trees and the hills and all that. Mm -hmm. This was a very different layout. So it was a success, but boy, did it come at a price in terms of credibility and controversy. <laughs> okay. Before we roll into fans forum, John.